and welcome to No Two Gays About It. I'm Tom Burke. And I'm Michael Foley. And we are two gay males over the age of 50 who are here to talk about whatever we feel like talking about this week. Politics, pop culture, LGBTQ news and issues, whatever's out there. How are you doing, Michael? I'm doing just peachy today, Tom. How are you? I'm good. So what do you want to talk about today? Anything special? Yeah, actually, I'm a, I'm a, a little riled up um, Ooh. just because of some hate mail we got, which okay. I'm really excited about. It, it makes me excited because we're getting under somebody's skin somewhere. And that's always a, a joy of mine, you know, Fantastic. when you're doing your thing and somebody else has an issue with it. I kind of I kind of I kind of feed off of that. Um, yeah. So we're good. We have that. And we have I want to talk about um, Club Q. In Colorado Springs as well. Okay. Um, and how about you? What are we gonna What are we gonna well, delve into? Well, definitely, we need to talk about the what's happening in the world. Latest thing: the big Super Bowl, the Rihanna Super Bowl commercials. But one of the main things I really want to talk about today is friendship over the age of fifty. Um, it's a really important thing that I really excited about talking. But before we get down to that, anything new and exciting with you? Uh, no, I got some musical bingo tonight, so I'm looking forward to that. It's always a great distraction, and uh, I get to sing really loud without judgment, <laughs> so that's always fun. All um, right. And, uh, well, I mean, I'm excited about this, too, because you're a morning person, and you got up this morning and got tickets to the Red Dress Party here in Palm Springs, yes. which is just the best event ever. Yeah, um, it's a huge event. It's um, for the LGBTQ. Um, what is it? What? Tell me. Help me here. It's 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 the LGBTQ center here. Center. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I couldn't think of that word. Center. Um, Three thousand people go to it. It's it's called the Red Dress Dress Red Party, where you have to go in red. You don't have to wear dresses, but everyone wears red. It is the social event of the season. So excited. So glad that we got our tickets right away. Um, and and yes, they do I, it here at the Palm Springs Airport. So it's um, they take up a couple of hangars and there's an outside area where all the restaurants in town have booths set up. It's all the food you could eat, which is my, my that's my wheelhouse. Um, and all the also, drink you all can the drink. drink you could drink. Yeah. That's Tom. <laughs> no, no, not at all. No, but, he, has, he has two when he's gone, right? Yeah. Uh, so, but Michael and I both are going to be there. And we talked about this. We're going to do like an Instagram live uh, while we're there, which is awesome. Michael, where can they find us on Instagram? At no, the number two gays about it. Um, and again, that's no, the number two gays about it. We're also on Facebook. Uh, no two gays about it. Also, again, use the number two, not the word. Um, and you could always contact us at uh, no two gays about it at gmail dot com. Lots of ways that you guys can contact us. To let us know what you would like us to talk about. Let us know what you would like to bring to the conversation, especially for those of us over fifty gay males, because our voice is really important to be heard. So let's get going, Michael. You want to start talking about what riled you up? Before we get to what riled me up, I want to get to something that's, to me, hugely important. And that is um, Club Q in Colorado Springs has a plan to reopen in the okay. fall. Before you do that, just remind us all, what is Club Q and what happened there? Yeah, it was. Uh, um, so in November, there was a shooting at the club and... People were injured and killed, and it was another one of those mass shootings in this country because for some reason it's become a daily event, but this was a targeted hate crime. Um, so Club Q was a gay yes. place. Is that, yeah, okay. It is a gay club. Sorry if, if that wasn't clear. Um, yeah. It, it's, it, it was sort of a, a revisiting of the Pulse massacre in Florida. Right. It's kind of what it felt like, I think, to the community, and there was a little PTSD in regard to that. Um, so the club has been shut down since, obviously, um, but the owner announced on Monday that they have plans to reopen. They're in the middle of redoing the space. There will be a permanent memorial for the lives uh -huh. that were lost. Um, and the owner actually did something pretty incredible. He took on two of the victims who were survivors and brought them on as employees. Oh, that's so, really cool. 
has yeah. been paying them and he's also been paying the employees who have been out of work since November. They're doing fundraising to help with that. And if anybody is interested, you could go to the Colorado Health Fund or the Compassion Fund and make a donation to help those folks out who have been out of work because of somebody else's ignorance and hatred. Um, I'm sorry if you're if you already said this, but what city in Colorado is this? It's Colorado Springs. Okay, awesome. And, so if you're out there um, in Colorado Springs, please go to Club Q and patron them. Give them all your money. Well, yeah, they're not open yet, so you would have to visit those two uh, charities to if you wanna if you wanna help out with the people who have been out of work. Um, but this is so hugely important because it's the community's way of saying you're not shutting us down. We're not going away. And I think that is so vital in today's world because, you know, my minorities more and more are being pushed to the point of, let, let's face it, the right wants us gone and out of sight again. And to make a statement like reopening that club is huge for the community. I think it's huge for us as human beings who just basically want a safe space to live in. Um, you know, and I think that goes for, <laughs> I was watching right before we started, it was in regard to the mass shooting this week in Michigan. And um, this young woman named ja Jackie Matthews um, was on the show. Um, she was also a survivor of Newtown which is, is mind blowing. And one of the things she said is, I can't believe in my short life that I've lived through this twice. Wow. And how this has become acceptable for a huge portion of the people in this country is, is mind boggling. They're worried about a drag show and yet they don't worry about their kids being shot in a classroom or having to go through drills to hide if there's an active shooter. And there's something so twisted and perverse about that, that it, it just boggles my mind. Um, and that sort of works right into, it, it's, I'm not even coming close to comparing to the two, but you know, the verbal hate that um, we've gotten in regard to um, some of the clips that we've posted and some of the other posts on Instagram um, just says more and more, they just want us to go away again. Well, definitely. I mean, if, if you all are following us, you know that last week we were canceled off of YouTube and we stood up and we fought that. And our producer, Jessica, also stood up with us and we got reinstated onto uh, YouTube, which was awesome. And like this, they're trying to cancel Club Q and no, they're going to fight back and they're going to reopen it. So yeah, you can try all you want. Um, I'm too adorable to cancel, but you know, I'm just going to keep showing up. Exactly. And that's what we have to do. It's like, you know, we, we allowed ourselves to be pushed into a closet for too long and lived with the shame that they imposed on us. And it's not going to happen anymore. Cause you know, in the immortal words of Lady Gaga, we were born this way. Well, I think it also helps the fact that we are gay men over the age of 50. We're, we're getting to that point where it's like, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not going to do what you want me to do. Yeah, when we were younger, we all did what we thought we had to do. And now at this age, it's like, yeah, fuck all of you. You know, this is who I am. That whole, that La Caja Falls song, I am who what I am. You know, that's it. And now at our age, I think we can stand up and finally be like, no, we're done. We're done with this. But it's also our job as older gay men, older people in the LGD, LGBTQ um World to tea, uh, tea okay. world to uh, I'm also old, so that's why it happens. But I get it. as older, more mature people in this community, it's it's our job now to stand up for the younger people. It's our job to get out there and show younger people that it's okay to be you. It's okay to have people hurling these insults at you, but just stand up and be proud of yourself. So I think we have a responsibility as, again, older gay men to get out there and make sure that the younger generations of our community are 
as strong as we are today. Yeah. And, and, and hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll follow in our footsteps and get politically motivated and politically involved because it's hugely important. They, ca they carry the next generation on their shoulders as well. So it is refreshing to see that, you know, you have all this younger uh, LGBTQ plus um, family members who are living out and are living proud. And, um, but we, ju we just need to go to the next step as a community and all, you know, be willing to stand on that front line and say, fuck you. Right. We're not going away. All right. I think we need a little breather here. Something a little uh, lighter, a little bit more fun. So let's talk about the Super Bowl. Did you watch? Did you, were you at a Super Bowl game? I'm, uh, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't. I, I, I did not partake in any. Although I did see one commercial. Okay. It was well, the Ben just, Affleck one. Yeah. Uh, commercials. Let's talk about those. Um, I too did not go to a Super Bowl game. I, I'm not a big football fan, although I know there are humongous football fans within the gay community. My college roommate, uh, who also I, I lived with a little bit when I first moved out to LA from New York, uh, huge football fan. We used to have these football parties and he flies to every game. So I know that there that is out there in our community. It's just not my part of the community. Um, but what about Rihanna? Did you watch any of the uh, halftime game? I'm a bad gay. Okay. I did not. Uh, that's fine. You don't have to. Um, <laughs> I just watch clips of it. You know, of course, she's got a baby bump and all the talk about her. And, you know, okay, big deal. But you mentioned commercials. That is my absolute favorite part of the Super Bowl. Uh, the next day, it's like after the Oscars, watching who wore what. After the Super Bowl, it's okay. Let's talk about these um, the ads that cost seven million dollars for thirty seconds. Jesus. In unbelievable, right? Wow. There seemed to have been a lot of nostalgia in the ads uh, this year. There was uh, John Travolta singing. Um, with the guys from Scrubs, a song from um, Greece. Okay. Um, there was the whole thing with um, Clueless. There, so there was a lot of like throwback stuff. You saw the Ben Affleck one with his new wife. Yes. What'd you think? So I watched it online. I, I saw something yesterday. Um, uh, so I clicked. I thought it was funny <laughs> it made me laugh i have to say well it's it's actually even more funny if you watched the grammys or watched anything about the grammys where there was that clip of her he's getting really pissed at him because he wasn't i don't know paying enough attention or something so then to watch this ad with her coming in getting pissed at him it was like oh my god that poor guy like what an idiot um but yeah, that was kind of fun. There was also uh, uh, Elton John and uh, Missy Elliott doing a Doritos commercial. So there were a lot of, you know, pretty good commercials. Not, nothing that was like, oh my God, that was the most amazing thing. You know, do you remember those Coke commercials with the, the horses and all of that was like such an amazing thing every year uh, for the Super Bowl. But I don't think there was one that was so unbelievably amazing this year. Uh, who knows? Maybe. Yeah, I, I wish I could. I wish I could help you out on this one. But again, I, I Jennifer and Ben were this was the only one I watched. Yeah. OK, cool. And I love donuts. So it made me even happier. OK, well, I love Dunkin Donuts. I grew up in Chicago and that chocolate honey glazed donut. Mm. Unbelievably oh my, my favorite. <laughs> Mine, too. <laughs> really? Yes. I swear to God, that is my favorite donut. Oh, yeah. And, Jersey, Dunkin' Donuts. Hello. Yeah. So we, we, we are. Right. That's, look, we just found another thing that we have in common. Well, there you go. Every time I would go <laughs> back home, that was like one of my trips to Dunkin' Donuts to get yeah. those. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Um, all right, cool. So enough of the Super Bowl since we're not big football fanatics. But the next thing that I, I really want to bring up, I mentioned this earlier about friendship after 50 in the gay world. We got... You also had mentioned that about some of this hate mail that we've been getting, which I still can't believe people are thinking people as adorable as you and I are. <laughs> Whatever. Um, we did get a really great note from um, 
Two Bears Live. That's that's their handle or that is their whatever. It's Two Bears Live. So hello, Two Bears Live out there. Um, he wrote or they wrote, I'm enjoying you on Facebook and I'm excited about your new podcast. I was wondering if you could do a future episode on gays and friendship and making friends when you're over 50. Continue on. You're making a difference. Oh, my God. That's so nice. Thank you, Aww. Two Bears. Yeah, thank you, Two Bears. Hey. And how appropriate was that for you and I at this moment in our lives? Um, Michael and I separately have moved out uh, to Palm Springs from Los Angeles, where I was living for well over 30 years. How long were you in L.A., Michael? Th 32 years. Yeah, there you go. So <laughs> we were entrenched there. We had our lives, our friends, our family, built-in families that we made. So to come to a whole new world and start all over has been pretty difficult. And I understand exactly what our um, Two Bears Live was saying, that it, it is very difficult to not only make friends when you're an adult, but then in the gay community, there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on in there. Yeah. So not that we're experts, but we are doing this at the moment. So I just wanted to share some of the things that I've been doing to create new friendships. I know you've done a lot of things to, to create your new friendships. Um, one of the biggest things for me was, and I'm not the most outgoing guy. I'm not that guy who will talk to everybody. Uh, that's just not who I am. But I go hiking every morning and I go at the same time. So I basically see the same people when I'm up on the trails and I would force myself to just say, hello, Tom, come on, just say hello. And I'd be like, hello. And then, you know, a couple of days later, I would be like, um, all right, just stop and say, hi, I'm Tom. I see you every day. Mind if I ask you what your name is? So I don't just say, hey, you, um, and I have made some really nice friendships. Uh, met a great guy who was also from Chicago. Um, we had a lot in common. My husband and I got together with his husband and he. We've been out a, a number of times. So that was a really great way. So one of my suggestions for those of you out there who are in a place where you're trying to create new friendships is to do the same thing over and over at the same time. Like if you go to Starbucks, go every morning at 11 o'clock, you're going to see the same people there. And like me, force yourself, if you're not one of those outgoing people, say hello, uh, introduce yourself. And then every time you see them, you'll be able to talk about something else. I think that's just a really great way to slowly break that kind of icy thing that it, it's so scary to, you know, put yourself out there, especially if you aren't one of those really outgoing people. Um, that goes another way. My husband and I, when we were living in LA, all of a sudden I realized we don't really have a lot of gay friends. Uh, it was like such a strange thing. You know, we had come from New York and whatever. And and so I I purposely set out to meet a lot of gay people. We're not we're, yeah, obviously we've been married forever, and so we weren't going out to the bar, so I wasn't meeting people there. But I started Googling things, and one great thing that I found was a uh, nonprofit called Gay for Good. And I know they're in a whole bunch of cities. Gay for Good is a group of gay people that get together, and they you know we were cleaning out. I don't know, ravines, we were painting schools, we were building things. But the bonding experience I had, I have made some really amazing gay friends. So another one of my suggestions would be volunteering, especially if you're going to volunteer for something that you're passionate about or you feel strongly about, the people that are there also have that same feeling. So right there, you have a connection, right? Absolutely. Now you, I know, have also out there trying to make some new friends in your new city. What are some of the things you're doing? Well, I, like you, I, I'm not overtly, I'm not big on the outgoing thing. Um, so it's been 
It's been an interesting ride, like it has been for you. Um, I have forced myself to go to bars more. Um, and I've met some great people that way. Um, I also, I, I love being active and playing sports. So if anybody out there is, you know, near a city or um, I know it's going to be tougher if you're you're in the middle of, you know, you know, maybe hours away from a city. But, you know, if you make an effort once a week, it wouldn't hurt. Google whatever your interest is. If you're a tennis player, Google gay tennis and whatever area you happen to be in. Or if you're a bowler, Google gay bowling, my area. Um, and you will be shocked at the things that come up. There's also softball leagues. There's bridge groups. There's knitting groups. Um, and one of the coffee houses here in Palm Springs, like Tom said, I usually go around the same time and I'll do some writing. Um, but there's anywhere between eight and 15 people there knitting. Wow, which, that's which awesome. I'm so tempted to go... I want to knit, you I'll know, do it. just for something else to, to keep me occupied. And you're creating something. How, I mean, how fun is that? Yeah, I um, think that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, there, there is something for everyone out there. I know Michael has has been very generous in saying like, hey, you, you and your husband should come to bowling on Fridays with me. Well, <laughs> you'll you'll get to know me a little bit more, but I'm just not the bowling kind of a guy. That's just not my world, right? But that's yours. And you also you also brought, uh, Scott, my husband and I, one night, and you mentioned you were going to go tonight to Musical Bingo at one of the bars. That was a riot. I mean, we had so much fun, and everyone is just being goofy and singing, so you don't feel like an idiot, and the person next to you is just being as goofy as you are, so it's easy to also make that connection with people there. And there's something really heart filling about seeing an entire room because just singing the carpenters at the top of their lungs or Bohemian Rhapsody or, you know, the right. music varies or show tunes or whatever it is. It's just the walls are down, which is a rarity in a gay bar. You know, everybody's just like, what the fuck? Let's right. just have fun. And that that's usually not the bar environment, you know? Um, so yeah, I, and like you said, you know what, you have to push yourself because as we get older, we tend to tighten our circles and maybe not push our boundaries as much as we should and do things that make us feel uncomfortable. And sometimes you have to feel uncomfortable um, because oh, yeah. it's definitely worth the payoff, you know? And the thing is, you know, I'm sure you're finding this as well. We are out here trying to find these new friends. So I'm pretty much saying yes to a lot. I will go, I will, you know, go to whatever party or dinner party and try to meet people. And, you know, you don't always click every time. You know, I can walk into a room and be like, yeah, these aren't my people. Um, but I'm, I'm putting myself out there. And maybe the next group that we meet will be someone that I can connect with. So you also have to be kind of aware of that, that every person you meet is not going to be your best friend. Every person you meet, maybe they'll be an acquaintance. They're not going to be that really close friend that you need. Here's something else that I'm sure Two Bears Live, because there's two of them, would understand. In the couple world, it's always really difficult because you might like one of the guys and then the other guy you're like eh, i didn't really like him or i know a lot of people might of course love me and not be so hip on my husband even though i'm kidding they probably all like him and think i'm a total asshole but you know there is that that dynamic as well if because i'm going in as a two and then i'm meeting other twos yeah. all four of you have to get along and that makes it even tougher but as you said, it's worth it at the end to just make those efforts. And even if you're just going out and it wasn't a good experience, you'd still got out. You still made some connections. So definitely, I'm, I'm sure that's also an issue for a single guy, too, that, you know, are we connecting as friends or are we connecting on a different level as well, you know, Um uh, I don't know that I'm asking you. Is that it's something? a huge yeah? It's a huge issue, and you yeah. you you just took away my side eye. 
Oh, well then, okay. I, no, no, no. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to go right there because um, Great. sometimes when I go out, I'll strike up a conversation with somebody and it's just on a friendly level, but then all of a sudden their hands on your crotch or yeah. they're like, so you want to come home? And it's sometimes... If, if men could put their, I know this is going to be a challenge, if you could just put the sex out of the equation and realize that not everybody who's talking to you in a bar is in that same place, it would be awesome. Um, and then, like, let's say, you know, you, you go to a movie or you start to hang out as friends. And if something else develops, that's even more awesome because you've obviously established the a friendship. friendship. Yeah. Um, but yeah, please stop thinking that everybody who's having a conversation with you wants to sleep with you. Well, let me ask you, though, that's more in the bar scene. That's not happening right. at, at your bowling league or at playing tennis, right? That, no, not at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, so once, I th- once in a while, like, so I, I use the Game in a Palm Springs Facebook page to connect with p- other people who play tennis. Actually, that's another great avenue for people to pursue, to go to Facebook and put in whatever your interest is. Like I put gay tennis, Palm Springs, and then all of a sudden this gay men of Palm Springs page pops up. So I like it. And then I go in there and I ask people if anybody wants to play tennis. And some of the people definitely had ulterior motives when they showed up to the courts, but that's okay. Um, You know, a couple have become friends. Um, There was only one that sort of, you know, I was very happy I didn't have a rabbit. because it got a little ugly. That was the fatal attraction reference, yeah, if okay, anybody so caught that. Nobody got that. I, saw, I saw it just totally went do over every... you know what? Every, well. I did, and that's, you know... But I saw the expression on your face, so I got... You didn't. That's why I cleared it up. Um, okay, thanks. So, again, it's that instance of... You don't always have to think with your dick that sometimes people just want to have a conversation with you, and that's okay. So... If you, your city doesn't have these Facebook groups, start your own, you know, start a gay men's men over 50 group in whatever city you're in. And and maybe that will be a way to bring people together. I think another amazing place to meet people is by taking a class. Um, When we were children, we were in classes and that's how we found all our friends. Even in college, I'm still amazing friends with my college friends you had that bonding experience. But I think as an adult, if you, again, if you take a class in something you're interested in, the other people are taking classes in that because they're interested. So there you have that same bond. So take classes, volunteer, go to the, go to the same place every day and force yourself to say hello or put yourself out there. I also am huge believer in entertaining. And I will throw a party and invite all kinds of people just to break that ice as well. Everyone will go somewhere. Everyone will go to a party they're invited to. And I'm not saying that you have to spend a, a fortune. It's just getting people together. It's it's another way that you can meet people and you say, invite another person. You know, we when we were living in LA, we did a Christmas party every year and it was a orphan party. And I would send out to people, if you know anyone who doesn't have anywhere to go, send them our way. If you have a friend in town, bring them. It was such a great way to, again, meet more and more people. So biggest thing we can say to you, to Bears Live, is just put yourself out there. I know it's tough. Michael understands it's tough too, but you just got to do it. And then find places that interest you. And those same people are going to be seeking you as well. And here's a positive about being coupled is that if you do go somewhere that you, neither one of you are comfortable with and you are pushing your boundaries, you have each other as anchors. Like I go somewhere by myself, it's a little more challenging, you know? So use use that guys, use that, use that bond that you two have to push each other's boundaries and help each other out there. Okay. What, you disagree with you disagree with that like if you no. and Scott you and Scott yeah. go somewhere together right and you're you know you're like oh man this probably isn't for us that you're like at least you're together 
Right. But then we're usually like fighting with each other. So I'm like, come on, go talk to those people. And he's like, I'm going home. You know. Uh, all right. OK. You well, always then, have. Yeah. I t- then I take that back. It's the no, other side I, of the coin that I don't live with. <laughs> everybody, everybody has their baggage. Everybody has, you know, walls that they are building. Everyone has their own issues. So it's hard. It's difficult for everybody, you know, straight, gay, single, coupled, um, but it is worth it because everybody does need friends. Everyone needs that support group out there. And, you know, you just got to keep looking till you find them. I, I haven't stopped. I'm still trying to find my people. I'm still trying to build my new world out here. Um, Come bowling. Oh, shoot. I'm busy that day. Oh, darn. I Tell me what, what day are you free? What day do you go bowling? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. All right. So good luck to you guys out there, to our two bears live, but also good luck to every everybody else out there. And please reach out to us and let us know how you develop friendships over the age of 50 and especially in the gay community. Let us know what what works for you. We need help just as much as our two bears live need help. So we'd love to pass that around. We'd love to have everyone in on this conversation because that's what we're here to do it, no two gays about it, is to create conversations that those of us in, in our age group are are all taking part of. So you mentioned this, the side eye. This is one of my favorite segments of our show. It's the savage side eye. You want to talk a little bit more about what's bugging you, Michael? No, I think I covered it. Just, you know, don't approach everything sexually, maybe, um, if you meet somebody out anywhere. Gay men, folk out there. It's know. not just gay men, too. I mean, I know straight. You know what? I, I am constantly reminded of this by my straight male friends. They're dogs. It's it's it is a guy thing. Uh, no, it's not a guy thing. It's a people thing. I, I, you know, hundred years ago when I was a cute guy, I I can't tell you how many restraining orders I had to take out on people, and most of them were against women. Women are really, they just don't let go. In fact, when I was living in New York, uh, I was on the sixth floor and my bedroom was, window had the fire escape. And I remember waking up one morning, and at the time I was probably like 26 years old, waking up and there was a 48-year-old woman on my <laughs> fire escape watching me sleep. <laughs> I was like, okay. One more restraining order I got to go get. Great, you know. But yeah, so it's not just a gay male thing. It's not just a male thing. There are some real dog women out there as well. I don't know if you read, I read the Daily Mail, which is a pretty right-leading publication, but I love the fact that they are always reporting on these female teachers who are having sex with their kids male students oh yeah it, what was what was her name Laterno. well that was the first one that we heard yeah. of. but i swear there is like one a week that they are it's unbelievable to me okay then i will i will correct that and give a amendum people <laughs> there you go <laughs> don't always think with your organs exactly you know? keep Especially, it in your pants yeah, keep it in your pants and see where it goes feel out the other person yeah, because there's definitely a vibe with somebody who you know there's some sexual stuff popping, and then there's a vibe where there's not, and you should be able to tell the difference at our age. Right, I'm just saying, and and that goes for boys and girls. Exactly. All right, I think that's a great place for us to leave it off today. Um, people, keep it in your pants. <laughs> uh, older gay males over fifty, get out there and put yourself out there and. Do all these amazing things to create your new friendships. Um, And a big shout out to Club Q for reopening and keeping the spirit alive of, of the people that you lost and the people who went through that tragedy. So I think that was all really great stuff we talked about today, Michael. Yeah. So... Before we end, I do want to invite everyone not only to reach out to us through Instagram, through our email, or through Facebook. Do you want to give those addresses for me again, Michael? I absolutely will. And from now on, when I say this, it will be the number two, not the word. No two gays about it at 
face on you can find us on Facebook, No Two Gays About It on Instagram, and No Two Gays About It at gmail.com. And we're also introducing a whole new thing. We'd love you to also support our community by joining us on Patreon, where you can become a member at Patreon. There are different tiers. You get early access to our episodes. You get some exclusive access to the videos of us. I mean, who doesn't want to watch us talk about all this stuff, right? Um, you all, There's so much more that we offer through Patreon. So if you would like to become a member through Patreon uh, and support our show, uh, please go to Patreon. It's uh, www.patreon, and you spell that P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash no two gays about it. Remember, that's the number two. But it's a lot easier if you just go to um, our show liner and just click the link there. It's in the notes. Um, but please, we'd love you to join us on Patreon for all of our amazing things. You get to see me and Michael talking about everything. And just um, remember, Michael has a face for radio, so that's, oh, yeah. just, that's just a warning. Please, we all have faces for radio now. I mean, I hit that wall so hard that that wall tumbled down and <laughs> crumbled my entire face, can, so please, no judgment. Can you please, guys tell no the judgment. story of you being a total Alice? I really feel like now <laughs> you just have to... I don't know. No, you do. Sure. Just, no, just tell really uh, I, quickly, I do. But it is yeah. really quick. Um, we were talking about drag at one point and, um, somebody had said, oh, I'd, I'd be curious to see what you look like in drag. And I said, well, I would look like Alice from the Brady Bunch. And I have a history cause I have been in drag <laughs> uh, and it's not pretty. And I do look like Alice from the Brady Bunch. So that's, that's me being a total Alice. All right. So if we can get 5,000 people on Patreon, Michael's going to dress up as Alice from the Brady Bunch. Yes, he will. You I heard will it sit, here, folks. I will sit here with a feather duster and just do the whole show as Alice. Now, could you do the show from my house while you're cleaning it as Alice? That would even be better. Yeah, like that. Will, that, that is as likely as you going bowling, Tom. All right. Well, everyone out there, we really are happy that you've joined us. If you do like us, if you'd like to come back, please tell your friends about us as well, because we would love to have them part of our community. We here at No Two Gays About It are very feel very strongly that it's important that people of our age get out there, let their voices be heard. But not only people like us of our age group, but all people out there need to get out there, join the conversation, and let their voices be heard. So until we meet again, Michael, it's been awesome. Tom, thank you so much for being here. 